Hey guys, what's going on? Um, how you doing? Give me a sec, I gotta share this out to our different avenues. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know if you guys are big podcasters, cast listeners like I am, but um, I listen to this one called Getting Grown, and um, whenever you know they're about to start something, they're like, oh, let's do it, and then one of them, she sings really well, and um, she made it into kind of like a gospel tune, and she says, oh, let do it. <laughs> I just always find it funny. All right. I turn the music on for y'all. Let me share this out. How y'all doing today? Okay. Yes. Hello, hello. Hey. Hey. All right, let's get started on Instagram. Okay. Live. Do, 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 do. Say what you want about Migos, but they are catchy, okay? And I'm not even going to lie, I used to hate on Migos when they first came out. Goodbye, Sussex. Hello, Archie. All right. Hi, Lil Said 82. All right. So we are live on Facebook and Instagram. Per usual, I want to give my disclaimer to my lovely folks on Facebook. There's a long delay on Facebook. Anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds. So, if you, you're, you're free to stay on Facebook. Just know that your response will be delayed to any of the questions I ask. But if you want to join us in more real time, hi, cute, hold on. If you want to join us in more real time, come join us on Facebook at NPL Consulting Firm, okay? So, we are getting started in three minutes. Hi, Cute, cut them up, Q. I think that's cut them up, Q, or cute, mup, <laughs> Um, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we've got story. The stories are juicy this week. We've got stories. Hi, J Max thirty five. Um, we're getting started in just a couple of minutes. We've got stories about wireless companies, beer companies, expensive jeans, um, Apple, tons of stuff. So invite your friends, have them come in and join us and you know, we can have a good old learning time today, okay? Hey, hey. Also, tell me something good that happened to you guys today. Tell me something good that happened to you. Yesterday, was it yesterday? I think yesterday or Monday. Wait, what's today? Tuesday? Yeah, today's Tuesday. So yesterday, someone said they finished a crafting project. Hi, Sincere39. How are you? Um, yes. So we're going to start it in just one minute. Make sure that you share this out to your friends at 805. Since you're 39, anything good happened to you today? Let me know. I don't care how small it is. Hey, Brittany. How are you? Hello, hello. All right, we are getting started very, very shortly, guys, okay? So make sure that you... Hey, Lisey. Make sure that you share this out. I haven't seen a, a couple of y'all in a minute. Yay, y'all here. Okay. Very happy about that. Um, I think people's schedules. Yes, I see, girl. Good for you. 
I see that people's schedules are normalizing and stuff. All right, so we are going to get started now, okay? All right. Let me hit the record button and then we are on our way, okay? Later. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. Uh, if you're wondering who I am, if this is your first time, but I think everybody who's watching live right now, you know, they're, they're veterans, so they know who I am. But if you're watching the replay and you're like, who's this lady? Um, I'm Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So if you need help with things like getting your business registered with the state, contracts, um, hiring employees properly, EIN numbers, DUNS numbers, operating agreements, partnership agreements, all those foundational things that you need to make your business legitimate. Um, I help you do those. Why am I qualified to help you do that? I'm so happy that you asked. I'm a licensed attorney. I have been one for 14 years and counting. I have started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I have had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but so many of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to make it in business, there's just some things that you need to know. And that's why I'm here. Okay. If you want to, uh, get your business off the ground in this time, I know a lot of us have some free time on our hands and we're trying to figure out ways to turn side hustles into full-time hustles or find a way to, you know, start something. Um, I want you to reach out to me. How can you reach out to me? You go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. And there you can set up a free 15 minute consultation. If you're a first time client, you can also download my free biz launch cheat sheet that will allow you to, that will help you to start your, uh, dream business in the next seven days or less. Uh, you can also subscribe to my YouTube and podcast channels where you can watch or listen to the replays of all the episodes of NPL Legal Dish. And also I want to remind you guys that um, if you are thinking about starting a business during this time while people are shifting and pivoting, um, pick up Business Startup Basics, um, again, at Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. It's basically a crash course into entrepreneurship. It gives you those building blocks that you need to be ready. It tells you all the steps that you need to do, where you find the information, why you need to have it, how it helps you, how to organize it, all that stuff. It comes with four videos and three eBooks. Okay. And it's $59. Um, so go pick that up. But that's enough about me. Let's get to the show, all right? For those who may be watching and don't know what this is about, so here's what happens. I pull stories from the news, stories that people send me, stories that I see on social media sites, stories that just seem interesting, stories that have concepts that we can learn as business owners or potential business owners, and we talk about them, okay? So this is a discussion. I want to hear from you. I want you to answer questions. I want you to, you know, sm mash some buttons in the comment box, all right? I want to make sure that you guys are here with me because this isn't fun if it's just me talking to air. I love it when we get into discussion, so never feel afraid to, you know, drop a comment and I will definitely, as long as it's appropriate, <laughs> and I will definitely get to you, okay? So we are going to get started right now. Um, we have a series of stories, but um, I wanted to do some just some quick ones first before we get into the meaty stories. So as you can see, the title of this show is called uh, Goodbye Sussex, Hello Archie. So if you have been paying attention to um, Harry and Meghan, if you, ha if you have been paying attention to Harry and Meghan, give me a um, thumbs up sign. If you have been paying attention to the Royals, Harry and Meghan, you know their whole ordeal. Uh, Megan was not feeling being, you know, the princess or whatever. They renounced their royalty. Hi, Jaleel416. Thank you, Lisey J. They moved to the United States. Apparently, they're settling in Los Angeles now. And as we know, we've talked about this on the show. They were trying to trademark the phrase Sussex Royal, but they were getting, um, they were experiencing some pushback because they had renounced their royal titles, right? So, and at least in England, they're like, uh, we are very serious about who gets to use the word royal. So if y'all are going to renounce the royal, 
you're going to have to drop the trademark. And there were oppositions all over the place. Well, apparently Harry and Meghan are like, you know what, whatever, we don't need it. And they have renamed um, their nonprofit. Originally, they were going to name their nonprofit Sussex Royal something something. But they have renamed it to Archwell after their son, Archie, um, which I think is really cute. So uh, I just wanted to update you guys on that and let you know that uh, apparently Harry and Meghan have dropped Sussex Royal and they are now going with uh, the, um, the name Archwell for at least the nonprofit portion of their new ventures. And Archwell is spelled A-R-C-H-E-W-E-L-L. Um, so we want to wish Harry and Meghan luck in this new life. Congratulations on your freedom. And I hope that you are happier than you could ever be. So that was the quick update. Number one, quick update. Number two, um, do any of you guys shop at Zara? If you have heard of Zara shop at Zara, if you know what Zara is, give me a Z in the comments. Um, a couple, I want to say a month or two ago, we did a story about some jeans, um, that Zara was being sued over. This company called Amiri, they make these $1,150 jeans. You know what they are, Lisey J? Okay. So Zara was apparently making, um, well, there's this company, Amiri, they, they made these jeans that cost $1,150. Zara made um, jeans that looked very similar to these jeans. As a matter of fact, the when I talked about this story and I put it in my stories the last time and I asked you guys if it was too close for comfort, 100% of you said yes. And I put it again today. And again, 100% of you said yes. So Zara was selling knockoff, um, jean, knockoff versions of these $1,150 jeans. I think they were like $50 at Zara. Um, and Amiri sued them for trade dress. They said that this is a very unique design. It's protected. And Zara is, you know, infringing on their work. Um, Zara is not taking this lying down. Zara has basically um, come back and they have argued that uh, there is no infringement here because the Amiri jeans are generic and functional. And so it's fair use. So they're basically saying the, the style um, of jeans that Amiri made, there's nothing special about them. Now you can go to any store in America and find a regular pair of jeans. However, these jeans that we're talking about, they're a little different. They were like a light color and they had this um, leather, these leather patches and zips at the knees. To me, they were very distinctive jeans. Apparently a lot of celebrities were seen wearing um, these jeans uh, and Amiri is arguing that people have come to associate these $1,150 jeans with their brand. So they were, su they're suing Zara for $3 million because think about it. If you have a jean for $1,150 and you can get, you know, a suitable knockoff for $50, why not? Right. Um, but Zara is like, look, your jeans aren't that special. They're not that great, whatever, you know? Yeah, we, we're selling them, but there's no infringement here because they're generic. So I want to know from you guys, hi, DJ Freddy Fingers. If you saw the jeans in my story, if you know the jeans that I'm talking about, the Amir, and on the Amiri line, they're called the MX2 jeans. Um, uh, I can't remember what they're called for Zara, but I want you to look at those jeans and let me know. Do you think that these jeans look generic? Do they seem distinctive to you? Like if you saw these jeans and someone told you, oh, that's such and such brand, would you say, oh, anybody could make that? Or would you say that that is a very unique item? Because that is what Amiri is saying. They're saying that our jeans are very unique. Nobody else makes jeans like these. And for Zara to come and make these copies is really unfair. They're cutting into our bottom line. Lisey J said they're very distinctive. I think so too. So think about it this way. For every pair that Zara sold for $50. Now let's, I know everybody who bought a pair of Zara was not necessarily going to buy the Amiri pair, but let's say that Zara sold 10 pairs of these jeans at $50, which means that, you know, they sold $500 worth of jeans. For Amiri, 10 pairs of jeans is $11,500, right? So if those 10 people bought them at uh, Zara, that means that Amiri potentially missed out on $11,000 of revenue. So this is why, and this is how they're basing their loss. They're like, you know, we sell a lot of these jeans and because of Zara, you know, we have a potential to lose a lot of money. So do you think that 
Amiri should be given this $3 million judgment? Or do you think that Z uh, Zara is um, right in their argument that these jeans are generic? Lisey J says that the jeans are distinctive. I agree with her. But you guys look in my stories both on Facebook and Instagram and let me know. Do you think the jeans are distinctive or, you know, are they generic? And Amiri is just doing too much. But we will come back to that later. But those are just some updates that I wanted to give you. Oh, and one more. Um, I posted a story, um, a picture in my stories today of an app icon. And I um, asked you guys if you had this app. Um, did y'all know that Apple has a COVID-19 app? Apparently the app is to, you know, keep you updated on news about the virus and whatever's going on. Uh, but not only have they come up, hi, Mahogany Joy, not only have they come up with this app, um, Apple has joined the bandwagon of people who are trying to trademark COVID-19. So they have, you know, submitted an application to the USPTO to trademark the icon of their COVID-19 app. Um, I don't know why Apple feels like they need their own app for uh, <laughs> since they're not said nope no apple products well since they're not i am broadcasting on instagram from my iphone okay <laughs> so we will not slander the good people at apple on today um but yeah uh apple like i said has joined the bandwagon of people trying to trademark on covid19 do do any of you have this app if you have an iphone do you have apple's covid19 app um, and that's the first question. And second, do you think that Apple will be successful in this? Because remember, we have tons of people that are trying to trademark COVID-19 and coronavirus for tons of things. Apple is trying to trademark it for an app meant to provide, you know, health updates and blah, 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 blah. So do you think that Apple should be allowed to go forward with trademarking this app icon? Or do you think that Apple should kind of, you know, not be trying to profit off of a global pandemic? Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, Sincere 39 said, never seen or heard of that app until you brought it to our attention. Okay, well, Sincere 39, if you don't have a um an iPhone, you probably wouldn't. I don't know if they have COVID-19 apps on the Android market. But for those of you who have iPhones, let me know if you've seen the app. Lisey J said, no, I don't have the app. They probably won't be able to trademark. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll wait and see. Apple got long money. They might, you know, they might have attorneys in there writing up some you know, magical arguments in there. So we will wait. Um, since the 39 said it will probably be denied. We will wait and see. You never know what might happen, okay? But now we can get into our meteor stories, okay? Before we move on to that, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where we learn business and legal concepts through pop culture and celebrity news. If you are trying to get... Hi, I am Atia X Squire. If you are trying to get... Esquivel, sorry about that. If you're trying to get your business off the ground, um, I encourage you to go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and download my free biz launch cheat sheet. That is going to help you get your dream business started in seven days or less. Okay. And also that's where you can pick up business startup basics. It is a four part video, three ebook series that is going to put you through a business owner boot camp and give you all the steps necessary to start making your business legitimate. Okay. All right, so we are moving on um, to our meaty stories today, okay? Does anybody remember the wireless company Singular? If you remember the wireless company Singular, give me a C in the comments. C-I-N-G-U-L-A-R. Give me a C in the comments if you remember Singular Wireless, okay? Um, I remember seeing the commercials for Singular Wireless. Uh, it was like this kind of like, Thank you, Lisey J. This kind of like orange splash. Sincere 39 remembers. Thank you, Mahogany Joy. And they provided, you know, um, cell phone service. Uh, but about 10 years ago, you know, they merged with AT&T and they became a new company. And while to the public, they are, they are known as AT&T right now, on paper, this company is actually called New Singular. So on their legal documents, the company is called New Singular. But to us, the public, we know them as AT&T. Okay? You used to work for Singular? Oh, okay. All right. 
Well, here's the thing. So when Singular and AT&T merged, they dropped the term Singular in, for, their out, for, for their public face. So they were no longer using Singular to represent the company to the public. The only place that you see Singular when it comes to AT&T right now is if you look at their legal documents, right? Um, and they haven't used Singular in public for over 10 years. So now... Hi, Dennis O. Arena. So now there is a new company that is headed up by two gentlemen named Mark Thoman and Dormitus Brands, okay? Um, and they want to trademark Singular uh, uh, for mobile phones, accessories, telecommunications equipment, and downloadable media. Now, remember, AT&T has not used Singular for over 10 years, okay? Um, but on their legal documents, they're called New Singular. Only the legal documents. I didn't find this out till today. As far as I knew, it was called AT&T. But AT&T, they're saying they are opposing the trademark application for Singular because they're saying that this could create a false sense of connection between this new company and AT&T. Hi, Kaleido. I think I'm saying that right. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, so AT&T is saying, look, we may not use the name Singular out in public, but on paper, we still have Singular in our name. And if this company is allowed to trademark Singular for their products, that is going to create a false association between our two companies. So that is um, AT&T or New Singular's, oh, thank you or New Singular's argument as to why this new company headed by Mark and Dormitus should not be allowed to be trademarked. So I want to ask you guys as an audience, AT&T has not used Singular in the public for over 10 years, even though it is on their legal documents. It's, you know, it's on their legal paperwork. So if you go actually look up the company, you're going to find New Singular, but all their commercials, all their merch says AT&T, right? This other company wants to be known to the world as Singular. Do you think that because AT&T has not used Singular publicly in the last 10 years that they have lost um, some of the ownership of that when it comes to trademarks because they haven't used it in the public for the last 10 years. I don't remember the last time I heard Singular. So do you think that Mark and Dormitus should be allowed to trademark the word Singular for their new company where they're going to ostensibly be selling phones, accessories, and telecommunications equipment? So they're going to be in the same business as AT&T. Do you think that they should be allowed to go ahead and trademark Singular? Um... You work for AT&T. AT&T is a well-known brand. No one knows Singular even exists anymore. Mahogany Joy said definitely not. They own it. They own it, but they haven't like used it commercially. Remember, your trademark represents your goods in the marketplace. When you have a trademark, you're saying that when you see this word, when you see this picture, when you hear this phrase, this connects you to a company, right? AT&T has not used Singular in the last 10 years. I didn't know that they were Singular up until this article, right? So, have and you have to renew trademarks every 10 years, plus you have to use it. So, do you think that AT&T has lost some of the ownership over Singular? Um, Lisey J, since the other night said AT&T will bully them, probably because they got long money, um, Lisey J said, no, I don't believe they should be allowed to trademark singular. Oh, okay. I, I was kind of on the fence with this because I'm like, if you're not using the word, it's not representing your goods. I don't know if you've renewed the application. I would have to know how close their application is to renewal or if they have taken steps to renew the trademark. High pushing metal. Um, but apparently y'all think that they shouldn't be allowed, um, that this new company should not be allowed to trademark Singular. And I do understand that too, because you can come up with so many names in the world. Why are you trying to use this name that, yeah, it may not have been that popular, but it's still a name that is known in telecommunications. Um, 
Since you're the other nine working there, you knew it was still singular, but AT&T is more known. Okay, so people in the inner circle know that it's singular. Mahogany Joy said, in that case, yes. If they haven't used it as you are supposed to, then they could lose it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens between AT&T and these wannabe singular people. Um, now I do not work in the telecommunications industry. No, it's spelled the exact same way as, um, AT&T and they also want to use wireless with it. So they are, they actually want to be called singular wireless. Um, Mahogany Joy said another point, they could be saving it for something later. Mm, very interesting. That is possible. That is very possible. Um, Yes. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens between AT&T and this wannabe singular company. Since C39 said, yeah, they will probably lose. Probably. Probably. Okay. Um, how much time we got? Okay. All right. Um, okay. So let's talk about this next story. Has anybody ever heard of the hip hop artist Tech 9 if you have heard of Tech Nine, give me a T in the comments. If you have heard of Tech Nine, give me a T in the comments. Um, and if you have heard of DC Comics, give me a DC in the comments. Everybody should say DC. Sincere Thirty Nine has third of te has heard of Tech Nine. Okay, thank you, Lisi J. Thank you, Kal. Kal did I say Kalido or Kaleido? I, I can't even remember. I'm sorry, <laughs> Kaleido. I think I said Kaleido. DC. All right. So people know, people know, uh, tech nine and they know DC comics. Okay. Well, uh, if can anybody who knows tech nine, do you know the name of his music label or his, uh, you know, the, the um, the company that, that he works under, if you know the name of, you know, the record label, that Tech Nine operates and you know I guess releases movie music under. Put it in the comments. Do you know the name of Tech Nine's uh, music label, his music company? Uh, and if you don't know it, just give me a thumbs down. Okay. Uh, and for those of you who don't know it, for those of you out in podcast land who maybe you know just uh, uh, on your tiptoes trying to trying to know the answer, um, Tech Nine. Yes, since you're 39, you know your hip hop. Okay, so yes, Tech Nine, um, him and a, a a bunch of other artists, they all make up a a record label called Strange Music, and they have hi, uh, hey, hey, Ovin, and they have a series of trademarks under this Strange Music. They have a trademark for SM, for Strange Music, for Strange World, Strange Main, and Strange Fest. Okay. And Strange Music operates as a music label, an agency, and a studio. And along with Tech Nine, there are other artists um, such as Chris Calico and Mayday. There were a bunch of other people, but I, did, I didn't know who the rest of them were. Since Thirty Nine said he is independent and makes a lot of money, independent seems to be the way to go now because people just be trying to take a piece of your pie. Um, well, anyway, uh, so Tech Nine and Strange Music, this collective of artists, this record label, they are uh, opposing a trademark application by DC Comics. So, um, <clears throat> or at least fighting it. So apparently last year, DC Comics filed a trademark application for the term um, Strange Adventures. Mahogany... Joyce and hip hop. Heck yeah. Okay. Um, they, DC comics filed a trademark for strange adventures and it was supposed to be for TV, um, streaming, broadcasting, and also entertainment services, which included some music. So now the label strange music is going after DC comics and saying that them trying to trademark strange adventures in all of these at least in the music realm, is going to conflict with Strange Music's trademarks. Because they have all of these trademarks that have Strange in them, they're saying that there could be a false association between Strange Adventures and Strange Music. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think that... Now remember, Strange Music, they have trademarks for 
Strange Music, Strange World, Strange Main, and Strange Fest. So they have a slew of trademarks that have strange in them. And they have to do with entertainment and performance and music. DC Comics is trying to trademark one term for multiple categories. So they want TV, broadcasting, entertainment, live performances, and even music. Do you think that there is a possibility of confusion that Strange Adventures by DC Comics may be considered an offshoot of Strange Music because they have all of these trademarks that have Strange in them. Do you think that there's a possibility of confusion? Mm. Let me know what you think. Mahogany Joy is thinking. Because it's uh, it's a, it's like... Because um, it's like, I'm trying to think what I would compare this to, and I can't necessarily um, say it yet. I, I can't necessarily articulate it. I might need some time to wrap my head around it. So Mahogany Joy said, yes, there's a possibility of confusion. Sincere39 said, hopefully Tech 9 will win. If it was Marvel, I would be worried. Yeah, I could see the confusion. Yeah, Marvel, oof, Marvel just squashed him like a bug. Um, yeah, uh... Kaleido said the trademark can be more than just the name. Yes, it can be more than just the name. It can be a logo. It can be a phrase. But Strange Music, their, their, um, their issue is with them trying to trademark this phrase within the realm of music. Lisey J said, yes, there would be some confusion. There would be some confusion. All right. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. So strange music versus DC comics. So do you think that strain that, uh, tech nine and strange music, are they going to be successful? Sorry guys. My head just went left for a second and <laughs> you ever get stuck in your own head and you're like thinking something over and then you realize you haven't spoken in a little bit. Don't worry about me. But do you think that Strange Music has a chance of winning this argument that DC Comics should not be allowed to go forward with Strange Adventures? Do you think who do you think should win? Strange Music or DC Comics? I know that Sincere 39 is rooting for uh for for Strange Music. He's, yeah. Sincere 39 wants Tech 9 to win. <laughs> yeah. So I don't have a dog in this fight, um, but you know, I, Lisey J said strange music. She's voting for strange music. Um, I always want to stick up for, you know, the little guy. I feel like tech nine, you know, he's, uh, from what I know, he has a long history of, you know, working hard and, you know, he wants to protect his name. Um, since 39 said, I think so, or they could collab and let him do some soundtracks for DC movies. That is a good idea. Sincere 39. Hmm. DC comics might need to cut a check to tech nine. Mahogany joy is voting for strange music as well. Okay. So I think we're, uh, you know, we're all pretty much on the same page. I I'm, I'm going to wait and see. I always respect somebody protecting their name, no matter how big, no matter how small. Hi, Akron Confetti Company. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, but yeah, but um, we're going to have to wait and see what happens between Strange Music and DC Comics. But um, those were the stories that I had for you today. Uh, Kaleido said, I don't think it would interfere, to be honest. Um, why don't you think it would interfere, Kaleido? Let me know why, why you don't think it would interfere. And while you do that, I am going to read your comment. I'm going to start wrapping up because I like to finish the show around 835. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions about the stories that we covered right now, we're closing out on the Tech 9 story, Strange Music versus DC Comics, AT&T and Singular, um, Harry and Megan picking a new name for the nonprofit. If you have, hey, Obed. Um, if you have any questions about these stories, please drop them in the comments. Uh, we got a couple minutes before I have to log off, but I want to get Kaleido's um, last opinion on um, why he doesn't think that strange music and strange adventures would uh, w would interfere with each other. I would, um, you know, I am just always interested to hear everybody's take on you know the reasoning behind their answers. Okay. Um, hi, Mrs. Conchola one, oh, Mrs. Conchola 14. Okay. 
All right. Well, um, Coletto, I'm going to give you a, like 30 more seconds to get your answer in, okay? Um, I want to remind you... Oh, here we go. Using the name in the music shouldn't cause confusion, in my opinion. Okay, but remember, strange, strange music has all these trademarks that have strange in them. So somebody, do you think that there's a possibility that somebody might think, oh, this is just a part of their collection of things? Um, Sincere39 said, both in the entertainment field, first issue. Oh, shoot, we got a battle in the comments. Okay, uh, well, not a battle, but a discussion. It's a discussion. This is why we're here. We're here to discuss both sides. Kaleido says, using the name in the music shouldn't cause confusion. Sincere39 says, but they're both in the entertainment field. So where do we, where do we draw the line here? Because... I'm willing to stay on a little a little further to discuss this if you guys want. Um, and while you guys, you know, let me know where, where, where you're going with your arguments, I, I want to remind you guys to book your free minute, free 15 minute consultations if you are a first time client at Linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm. And also if you are looking for kind of a crash course into business ownership, go pick up Business Startup Basics right now. It's a four part video three ebook series that is going to give you all the steps that you need to be a boss in these streets for real. High IG safety is key. I'm seeing a lot of old faces in here tonight. Hey, hey. All right. But um, thank you guys so much for your participation. This was such a lovely episode. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, the week started off rough for me, but, you know, I'm feeling better. You know, coming on here and talking to you guys is a lot is is therapeutic for me. So I really appreciate when you're on here and you're participating. Um Kaleido said the word strange is a very broad term. It is a broad term. However, they have um they have uh created borders around it by saying, "Hey, this term strange, it go it's not just strange by itself. It's strange music." strange world so they're creating a theme and they do them all under kind of the same categories uh sincere 39 said if dc wants to make music and use strange in the title isn't that a conflict of interest and and that and that's where and that's where the issue lies uh mahogany joy said let's say they are on the same showcase tech nine performing and strange adventure has some artists performing at a festival or something well, we don't know what Strange Adventures is going to be. We just know that DC has tr tried has trade blah, 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 submitted a trademark application for Strange Adventures. Now they have submitted it for multiple categories: TV, streaming, broadcasting, and entertainment services, which include music. But we don't know exactly how they're going to use it. We don't know if it's going to be a band named Strange Adventure. We don't know if it's going to be a, a movie named Strange Adventure or a TV show. So there is a lot that needs to be cleared up there. Okay. But if, you know, if they were coming out with a group or some type of, you know, um, Strange Adventure group under DC Comics, I could see that being a problem. I could definitely see that being a problem. Okay. Any more last minute comments before we head out? We have plenty of stories, guys. I think that things are kind of balancing out now. So, you know, there's more actual stories that I'm getting. So I'm very excited. Uh, if you guys find anything, please send it to me. As usual, um, thank you for being here. Um, I hope that you guys are taking care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Do not go out if you do not have to. Um, just stay inside. Y'all ain't got nothing to do. Thank you, Mahogany Joy. She said awesome stories. But yes, join me here tomorrow at 8 p.m. And we will be uh, talking about some more uh, trademark infringement. If y'all find anything you want me to talk about, if you have questions about your businesses as well, whenever we have extra time, you know, I will um, spend, you know, a few minutes extra to, to answer questions. Um, if Tech Nine does, Kaleido said, if Tech Nine doesn't have legal control over that specific language, I don't think he can do much about DC. Um, well, we'll have to see how far their trademarks go, Kaleido. Since if Thirty Nine said, nowhere to go anyway. <laughs> yes, nowhere to go. So come hang out with me tomorrow night at eight o'clock, okay? Kaleido, Since if Thirty Nine, Mahogany Joy, Lisi J, everybody who um, participated tonight. Thank you so much. All right. I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.